This is Lynn Woods interview here talking with Canton Jones, who has a new CD out called Dominionaire. And Canton, so um, you are just like one, one busy soul. Uh, you know, you've been performing this kingdom music all over. So before I get into anything else, just t tell me what is kingdom music and did you create that? Well, um, kingdom music, the, the Bible talks about, you know, the sign of, of his return when Jesus is soon to return that the, the gospel of the kingdom will be preached all over the earth and that, uh, you know, you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added. So uh, we understand gospel music is the good news. Kingdom music, I feel like, is the next stage of that, which is pretty much preparing the way for Jesus to return. So basically doing the, the, doing things the way God instructed us to do it, love thy neighbor as thyself. And we talk about the principles of living for Jesus in the music. So that's why we call it kingdom music. It's a little bit more aggressive than gospel music because it uses um, rhythm and praise, hip-hop elements, uh, dance elements in the, uh, in the music. Um, so it's not like the what you would call the traditional sound of gospel music, but gospel music to me is the good news. So it's the very essence of gospel music. Because I heard something, and I don't know if that was from a mixtape or something you were talking about up in the club. Yeah, in the club. That's a song <laughs> that we wrote called In the Club, and that's why I say it's, it's about kingdom music, because when you talk about what the Bible says, the Bible says, well, there's two or three, I'll be in the midst. And when uh, we actually literally uh, rented out a club and had church in the club, we invited, uh, I remember Kirk Franklin was invited, and there were some uh, pastors and preachers from the uh, local community that were invited. And we had a church service inside the club. And I don't remember if they told the regular club goers that we were having a church service inside, but they came. Because if, if you're not going to come to church, we're going to bring the church to you. And people got saved that night. People got set free that night. There were people that rededicated their lives to Jesus Christ. People who usually wouldn't experience the love of God experienced the love of God that night that night because we took it outside of the four walls of the temple and took the church to the club. We are actually gearing up to take the church to the mall. So now we don't move from the from the club. Now we're taking the church to the mall. We're having a mall takeover service in uh in a mall in uh in the metro Atlanta area called Stonecrest. Well they don't let the Christians in the mall now. You know, because we're taking the gospel where it's needed, and that's in those different places where we're going to encounter people. So that's what that song was about. That song was pretty much explaining that night where, you know, people got saved in the club. Now, do you write all, write and produce all of your music? I write and produce most of it. I write uh, all of the songs, and I produce most of the songs. Um, in the creative process, I just, I'm a, what I call a studio rat. I love producing I love making, you know, making tracks and doing the creative process, you know. So most of the time, you know, it's it's me making the tracks, and we are actually making tracks for our other brothers and sisters because uh, they've been asking us for tracks for a while, and we got some time where, or a system, not pretty much some time, but a system to make sure we accommodate other brothers and sisters with uh, tracks as well. So, yep, I love it. I love it. We produce you know, we write, my wife produ produces some, and she, she writes her own music, and we just, you know, we're, we're about kingdom music and making sure that the quality is top-notch. We don't want to give God anything less than excellent. Now, speaking of your music, who were you influenced by musically while, while growing up? Wow, I call my music gumbo. You know, it's, it's a little bit of everything in there. So uh, I was born and raised singing quartet. Quartet music, my dad was a quartet singer. We sing in a group called the Noble Airs. And if you know anything about quartet music, it all ends with an air. So you got Christian airs, <laughs> on airs, you know what I'm saying? And uh, they used to have like, the Cummerbunds and the shiny suits. And that's back when the Jerry Curl and the Shag was in. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and the matching shoes <laughs> with the suits, yeah. you know? <laughs> you know and, and, uh, so we were... In a, in a quartet group, then I grew up in the Coastal Church of God in Christ, so I have that influence where I grew up listening to the Winings, um, listening to the Clark Sisters, and, and uh, singing the choir. Then I went to Morehouse College in Atlanta, Georgia, the alma mater of Dr. Martin Luther King, and sang in the Morehouse College Glee Club. So you have a choral um, and uh, Negro spiritual ex uh, ex influence in there, um, and you grew up in the hip-hop generation. 
So all of those influences <laughs> are in my music. So I like any way from, you know, the production of a Dr. Dre to the lyrics and, and the melodies of a take sick Stevie Wonder to the anointing of a Fred Hammond and, you know what I'm saying, and brothers like Kirk Franklin. So I'm all over the place. That's why I call my music gumbo because I'm influenced by so many styles of music. You know, it's not just hip hop. It's not just this one style because I feel like I have to become all things to all men so I can win some. Oh, okay. Now, um, you, uh, you, you, you mentioned your wife, so you, so you have a family. So how are you balancing all of this out? She balances it. <laughs> She's the boss. I, I tell people every time uh, that um, the most important piece of a chess uh, board is the queen. She's the most powerful piece, and you got to make sure that that queen is taken care of. So um, for years, man, my wife, when we started out, she was the one selling the, the music at the table. She was running the music. You know, she was my engineer, you know. She was the one that wrapped the shirts up. She was the one that did the booking form. So she uh, she is Kjo International, Kjo Records, which is the name of our company. And she built that thing when I had to go to work. She was at home building and constructing the, the, the infrastructure of our business. And then so now the balance is, you know, if, I, if she... You know, she understands how the calendar goes from year to year. Our, our peak times, our slow times right now, uh, there are not many slow times, but she understands how to balance that to make sure I'm home and, and make sure I'm away. So the great thing about it is to have a wife that understands the business. She's an artist herself. She has a project that's out. Uh, she's a soul jazz performer, very excellent. I'm a number one fan. Mm -hmm. And then, but to have somebody that understands ministry, understands family, understands marriage, understands uh, this business is a true blessing because I tell people all the time, if your wife or your husband don't understand this business, then this business can become the other woman or the other man that whittles itself between you and your wife. You know, so we got to make sure that you understand that they understand that this business is, 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 can be a blessing if you put it in, in its place. Amen. Now, you have a diverse group of fans that includes, like, celebrities and people from various denominations and, and ethnicities and backgrounds. Why do you think your music uh, is able to cross over and, and meet these people where they are? Well, I, I think um, the universal language of love is always expressed. And, and you know, uh, everybody knows that God is love. You know, if God doesn't have love, he is love. You know, and the, the thing about that is when people feel the love in the song that relate to them, you know, um, I feel like they, they, they're drawn to it, you know, and they're drawn to God in it. You know, and I'm not, I'm not a deep fella, you know what I'm saying? I ain't trying to beat, beat people head over the head with the Bible. All mm -hmm. I try to do is come to, you know how you, if you have siblings, um, you try to come and have a meeting with the siblings to try to make sure that mommy and daddy don't beat us all. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I try to go, I try to go, you know, put messages to my siblings, to my brothers and sisters in Christ or the non believers to say, All right, man, let's let's do this together and let's get us let's get it right here. Or if you're feeling bad in this area, maybe this will help you. There is a song that uh that's on this Dominion there project that's called Be Healed, where we name every disease that we can think of, you know, because we have brothers and sisters that are sick, that are suffering from sickness and disease, and it's our job to make sure that they understand that the good news, the gospel, is that they can be healed. That's the kingdom of God, that they can be, uh, you know, I'm not offended if people don't like my music, you know, because it's not for everybody, you know, and I, and I, I learned to run my race in my lane, not looking at the other lane, just run my race and do what God told me to do. Amen. It's like my girlfriend in Nashville. She says, stay in your lane. <laughs> yeah, stay in your lane. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. 